Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we're going to take a few moments to discuss a process referred to as calcium homeostasis. Now, as we begin, the first thing that I'd like to do is either remind you or inform you that there are four unique types of cells that pertain to bone tissue. And specifically, these cells are specific to bone growth, bone development, tissue repair, and as we'll discover momentarily, calcium homeostasis. Now, the first of these cells are called mesenchymal cells. Next, we have osteoblast. Thirdly, we have osteoclast. And following this, we have osteocytes. Now, the first of these, the mesenchymal cells, are precursor cells. In other words, these cells differentiate or can become other types of connective tissue, like capillaries or osteogenic cells. And for note-taking purposes, osteogenic cells are cells that will differentiate and ultimately become other types of bone cells. Now, osteoblasts are specialized bone cells, and their primary focus is to build bone tissue, while osteoclasts are also specialized bone cells, but their primary focus is to clean up old or damaged bone cells or reabsorb bone tissue. So allow me to share a quick tip on how to remember the difference between the two. The B in osteoblast is for building up, and the C in osteoclast is for cleaning up or reabsorbing bone tissue. And last but certainly not least, we also have osteocytes. And osteocytes are simply osteoblasts that have matured and have become entrapped in their cellular matrix. So within our bones, we have deposits of calcium. To be more specific, calcium is the most abundant mineral in the body. And because it's the most abundant mineral, it has extreme significance. In fact, we need calcium for things such as bone formation, blood clotting, muscle contractions, and nerve conduction. And because we have such a great need for calcium, our body utilizes a feedback loop to help us fend off periods when blood calcium may be too high, and we call that hypercalcemia, and when blood calcium levels may be too low, and we call that hypocalcemia. So in our first example, let's imagine that we have someone who hasn't been supplementing their diet with sufficient amounts of calcium it would be plausible for them to be in a state of hypocalcemia, which again means low amounts of calcium. So in this example, the decrease in calcium is the variable. Now, this decrease in calcium is going to be sensed by a sensor. And the sensor in this example would be the kidneys, as they monitor calcium levels within the blood. So the kidneys would then relay this message to a control center, which is the brain. And the brain would task the parathyroid gland, noted by the green structures you see here, to secrete parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone would then lead to the action of an effector. And in this case, the effector would be increased osteoclast activity. So remember that the role of osteoclasts are to clean up old bone or reabsorb bone tissue. And so what the osteoclast will do is reabsorb bone tissue. And by doing this, reabsorbing the bone tissue, which contains calcium, this calcium can then be deposited into the blood and as a result, increase blood calcium levels, which ultimately reverses the initial hypocalcemia that we noted earlier. Now, let's imagine in another example that we have someone who has been over-consuming or over-supplementing their diet with large amounts of calcium, it would be plausible for them to be in a state of hypercalcemia, which again means high amounts of calcium. So in this example, the increased amounts of calcium represent the variable. Now this increase in calcium is going to be sensed by a sensor, and the sensor in this example will still be the kidneys, as they monitor calcium levels within the blood. So the kidneys would then relay this message to a control center, which is still the brain. 
In the brain with task, the thyroid gland, shown by the entire gland here except the green areas, to secrete the hormone calcitonin. And calcitonin would then lead to the action of an effector. And in this example, the effector would be a decrease in osteoclast activity because the role of calcitonin is to specifically inhibit osteoclast activity. So in essence, what we're saying is that the body is halting the uptake of calcium from the bones to prevent there from being even higher amounts of calcium in the blood. And so as a result, the body doesn't continue increasing calcium levels, thereby counteracting the initial high levels of calcium. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. And if you indeed found value in it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.